In my endless quest for the perfect video idea, I have looked through countless websites on this platform, but I have always passed over one particular site thinking that 3D layout was beyond my scope, probably the work of 3JS or some other fancy JavaScript library. However, this time I decided to give it a shot using just CSS 3D transformations and JavaScript with little GSAP and scroll trigger. After hours of playing around, not only did I manage to mimic that 3D effect, but I was also able to replicate that cool parallax mouse move effect with scrolling. In today's video, I'll show you step by step how to create this amazing 3D image gallery perfect for your landing page or a project page. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. For those who want to dive deeper, grab the source code and unlock exclusive content with a pro membership, all for less than the price of a coffee. You can find the link in the description. Let's dive into the code without any more delays. Let's start by adding some basic elements to our page, including a navigation bar and a footer. Next, I will add a div with the class name of preview image and place an image inside it. This will be our default preview image. We'll update this image source dynamically based on the item we hover over with the mouse. Next up, I'll create a container that will eventually hold our 3D gallery. We'll leave this gallery empty for now because we'll be adding the images dynamically later using JavaScript. It doesn't make sense to hardcode them since we'll have about 100 items and we want to avoid redundant code. That's pretty much it. Let's add some basic styling to our page. As usual, let's kick things off by stripping away all the margins and paddings from the elements and setting the box sizing to border box. For the HTML and body, I'll set the width to fill the viewport and the height to a massive 1000 viewport height, giving us plenty of space to scroll and play with. Moving on to the navigation and footer, I'll fix them to the top and bottom of the page respectively. They'll stretch across the full width of the viewport and display their contents neatly spaced out with flexbox. I'll also apply some straightforward styling like padding and font settings. For the container that's going to hold our 3D gallery, I'll position it fixed with a width and height of 100% of the viewport. I'll set its overflow to hidden and give it a perspective to prepare for our 3D transformations. Within that, our gallery will sit positioned absolutely at the center but shifted slightly for the optimal 3D effect. It's set to rotate slightly to give us that cool 3D dimensional feel. Each item in the gallery will also be positioned absolutely centered right in the middle of its container by default, sized appropriately and given a basic background color as a backup. We are going to reposition them anyways dynamically with JavaScript. Images will fill their containers completely thanks to the object fit cover property ensuring they maintain their aspect ratio. Finally, the preview image div is fixed centrally with a fixed width and height and style to clip its contents. That wraps up our CSS setup. Let's walk through the JavaScript that powers our interactive 3D gallery. Right when our page loads, we start by grabbing the necessary elements. We select our gallery and the preview image we'll be updating. These elements are crucial because they are the main components we'll manipulate based on user interactions. Next, we set up a mouse move event listener. This function calculates the user's cursor position relative to the center of the screen. 
Using these values, we determine how much to rotate our gallery, giving the illusion that it's reacting in real time to the cursor movements. Then, we use GSAP to smoothly transition the gallery's 3D rotations using these values. We then dynamically generate 150 gallery items. Each item is a div containing an image. These images are sourced from a set pattern in our assets folder, cycling through 15 unique images. This way, we don't need to hardcode every single image, making the process efficient. After placing the items in the gallery, we use GSAP to set their initial positions in a circular layout, each uniquely rotated to distribute them evenly around a central point. Adding a mouse over and mouse out events to each item allows us to change the preview image dynamically and animate the image to pop slightly when hovered, providing immediate visual feedback to the user. Finally, we will use scroll trigger to make our gallery react to your scrolling. We are going to create a scrolling animation that makes our 3D gallery rotate as you move up or down the page. We start by setting the body of the page as our trigger, which means our animations are based on the user scrolling through the entire page. The animation starts when the top of the page hits the top of your screen and ends when the bottom of your page scrolls out of view. With Scrub, we add a bit of grace to how the animation follows your scroll. It smoothens out the starts and stops of your scrolling actions. When you scroll, the on update function continuously updates the rotation of each gallery item. It calculates a new angle for each item based on how far you have scrolled. This angle adjusts in real time, rotating each item in the gallery which creates a captivating visual effect that seems to flow with your scroll. Finally, we add the setup rotation function to ensure that our gallery's initial rotation settings are correctly established at the start. This script not only brings the gallery to life, but also makes the user's interaction with the elements a core part of the experience. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.